Hey artists of GSA 2020, my name is Rudy Salgado and I'm an artist here in Louisville, Kentucky. I'm gonna give you a little tour of my studio. I'm gonna talk about some projects I'm working on with my partner, Susanna Crum. I'm gonna give you a top secret tour of my basement. I don't even think Gaddy's been down there. And then I'm gonna show you some of my work on my website later and kind of how I kind of put things together. But I just wanted to start outside the front of my building. Um, I think, you know, I was trained as a printmaker, so I have an MFA in printmaking, and I have a minor in ceramics, and I've done some glass blowing, and my partner does a lot of sculpture and uh, some cyanotypes. Um, she does some projection work a lot of mapping work. So we have a lot of various interests. Um, I also make like tintype photographs. So we got some people walking by, but, um, so, but there's a lot of different variety of things we do. And I think that our building um, kind of entails that. So like on the first floor behind me is our printmaking studio called Calliope Arts. And um, people could come and well, before the pandemic, right? Uh, they would come pay a monthly fee and they would use our facilities. We would teach workshops there. We do a lot of outreach to schools and museums. And then on the second and third floor of the building, we live up there. And then next door, we have some tenants that are living there and I'm remodeling the first floor to have a gallery space over there. And I'm just kind of giving you some background because this kind of whole building is an art project. So although I make prints or I make sculpture, I think the way that we are living our lives with the community of people and artists coming and working here, um, to the chickens that we have now in the backyard and the vegetable garden and the community that we have around us. So it's kind of nice to like foster this community and kind of grow it and try to like be a place for artists. So I just want to say all this because being an artist is a hard thing. It's not an easy thing. It's a lot of hard work, but it's so rewarding. The other thing that's really awesome is about it is like, it doesn't have to be like the way that, it doesn't have to be perfect ever. Like I have varied interests and I think everything I do is good enough and that's fine for me. Some people wanna be like super perfectionist and that's fine for them. But for me, I'm super curious and I wanna learn a lot. Life's so short, right? So I wanna absorb as much info I can, I can absorb and then kind of try to give back in the ways I feel like I'm giving back but just remember as you as you grow and pursue the arts or not like it doesn't have to be like the way that people did it you know or whoever does it like a lot of people want to go work for Disney well it doesn't have to be like Disney like it could be whatever you want to do but you just have to work hard and do it so I'm gonna kind of start outside I'll be back in a second. So, this is the building that we live in, and our printmaking studio is here. And we live here and here. That's our bedroom, and behind that's our kitchen. And then we have tenants here and there. And then below here will be our art studio, or I mean, art gallery and like a tin type studio, possibly a project space. But I want to start out here because we did this community project. So in 1937, there's a catastrophic flood in Louisville. Um, and the mayor printed these pledges uh, to make, you know, like people happy and be positive. So we got word of this and then we've been printing, um, we've printed about a thousand of these now. And we've been just hanging them out here and people come pick them up. And one of the really cool projects that we've been doing is this, project called C-19 Artworks for Kentucky. Um, and my partner over there, Susanna, is actually printing some prints. But basically, we invited 19 um, poets or artists or writers to make prints for us. We, would, we made instructional videos and then we delivered off, delivered off, we delivered materials for them to make the images. So these are some screen prints by the poet Hannah Drake. So 
So that's a really good way to work at a distance and kind of mailing and a lot of delivering materials. Um, Ron Whitehead is another Kentucky poet. He did this really nice lino cut here. And these are the plates that Susanna's printing right now. This is a, a young local artist. This guy, I think he's 21, Peter Price. And he makes really good work. This is also a lino cut. And then this is Jim James lino cut from My Morning Jacket, which was really fun to work with him. Everyone was really fun to work with. But this is a screen print that Jim made. And then this is a great local artist, Shamel Ford. I just love his chicken noodle soup. Now these are screen prints. And then this is where the chickens have been living here, but they're outside right now. So I think uh, Susanna's gonna talk to us a little about our C19 printing fundraising project while she prints. Hello. So what I'm doing right now, I've inked up the little lamb block and I'm actually reading this right. This is the right orientation to put it through for the best results. Uh, this is a printing press, specifically an etching press. Uh, it's good for etchings, relief prints, monotypes, if you've done any printmaking before. Um, They're going to do some with Susie, so. Oh, excellent. So, it's got a big top roller and then actually a bottom roller that cranks, puts a lot of pressure on the block to transfer an image to paper. So I'm going to grab paper, make sure I'm printing on the correct side. Can you tell us a little about the project? Um, the individual artist Rudy already mentioned, uh, but the project really came out of in early April, Rudy and I were thinking about ways to connect with other artists, people with ties to Kentucky. Uh, we wanted to provide some financial support to visual artists who were struggling during the pandemic. You know, a lot of us have freelance jobs, um, commission-based work, stuff that when the economy doesn't do well, or when gigs are canceled, we're in trouble. So we wanted to raise funds for that and also work with other artists to make use of the resources here at Calliope. So now I've sent this through the press and I can see the impression. So we have some artists doing stone lithographs. We have some copper plate etchings, screen print, and linoleum cuts. What about the proceeds or the sales, Suze? So we are splitting the proceeds three ways. Calliope takes a third, artist takes a third, and the remaining third goes to Elevator Artist Resource, which is a state working on a statewide coalition with other organizations to provide emergency assistance to artists working in Kentucky and Southern Indiana. So the Artist Resource Trust is gonna get that money. Some artists are donating their share so it's either two thirds or one third of the process, proceeds of the sale of the prints. So this is Calliope. So it's a community print shop. It's usually not so clustered because people are coming in to use the shop. Um, they have access to three etching presses, a litho press, screen printing facilities, and a dark room. Um, but I want to show you some of my printed work. This is a self-portrait of etching I did a few years ago. And the one on the right is a stone lithograph. And then this is also a stone lithograph. It's important that we get to the basement because all my drawings and all my shapes just really come from different objects, different things I like. But I'll kind of walk you around the studio a little bit. Here's a litho press that's covered with stones. There's Susanna printing again. So I'm gonna move these gals up here and show you one of my older prints. So my work, I'm really interested and excited about fluids. Yes, fluids and the way that they move around in my body. 
So this is some of my older work. This is stone lithographed, but you can see like this is inspired by like an oil pump. Um, this is an organ, like a lot of scientific glassware, a lot of funnel action. So I'm really into kind of found objects and trash and they kind of inspire me to make make the forms I'm into. So I compare my work a lot to like the body and also like uh, mechanical engines and how things operate that way. But that's another print of mine. That's a laser cut intaglio print or whatever that's worth to anybody. Ooh, the magic moment again here. Moving forward. And then see we go up there and we have a little living room and some studios, kitchen. We walk into the back room here. Here's our dark room. Um, we built our screen printing unit. So see, you don't have to like always spend $10,000 to have a nice equipment. You could learn how to build nice equipment yourself. It's perfectly fine. This is my chemicals here for my tintype photography. And then this is a screen printing table here, but it has a bunch of my tin types on there. <laughs> One day the neighbor came home with a bunch of fish heads. So I thought they would be nice to make tin types out of. So tin types are a photographic process that was invented in 1851. They're most like commonly known for like civil war photography. They used a lot of tin types. But again, this is another screen printing table and then a screen printing washout booth. And then down here is some ferric chloride that we use for copper plate etching. Um, so this is artist Mary Crothers plate. I need to dip it in the acid soon. But again, so like this is a very active space. People are always kind of coming and going. They have access to the front door. And then we live upstairs and then back here, we have garden and I'll just stop by and show you guys the chickens because, because why not? So we got chickens here. They're a lot of fun. They're pretty filthy, but we're getting used to it. <laughs> we're in the middle of building their coop, which is really fun. I don't have to build like a boring chicken coop. I could build a really cool, interesting chicken coop and I'll use the skills I have learned building sculpture and doing that kind of stuff here too. So we can see we've got a lot of rocks here. We're gonna start building some walls with them. Be a fun project. So there's always lots of projects going on around here. A lot of different people here. So I'm gonna show you down here. So I think like I'm interested in the human body and I think a lot about museums. I think a lot about how information is given to us, right? Like we go to a museum and you read like a paragraph and then you feel informed about whatever you're reading about. So a lot of my work deals with like early medicine practice and kind of quackery or like the selling of um, quack medicine. So this is my kind of my 3D sculpture studio. It's a mess. Another thing that I really like about museums is their collection and how everything has a number on it. Everything's almost a specimen. So a lot of my projects, I will have numbers on everything. So it kind of associates itself with a larger collection or gives it, give it, it, it in, in importance, right? Like, a, you know, it's more believable if it has, um, you know, a number on it and it's part of a larger collection. So once we get to my website, you'll kind of understand, you know, why I have a bag of, I'm not sure what these are, medical nerve block trays, you know, so it's perfect. But I also have like, I keep things pretty organized so you can kind of see we have power things down here. So there's some old engines in here. Here's on the, my grandfather's electric shoe cleaner that I thought I can use that engine to repurpose. This is one of those engines that like little motor thing that blows up an air mattress. So I was thinking about repurposing it 
and using it to blow up an inflatable that I make myself. Um, I think generally it's pretty decent to help you keep organized. Also, like you have to think about when you're building sculpture, like everything has uh, like a reference or history, right? Like this stuff, I would never really necessarily like use it straight like this. But if I dipped it in, you know, a hot pink paint or, you know, some other form or change the shape of it a little bit, maybe I just wrap clay around it and I get this form of the clay or paper mache to give it kind of this clumpy feel to it. So I'm always just collecting strange things. You never really know. I don't even remember always what I have in here. Where's my favorite drawer? I think it's, maybe it's over here. I just like it because it's labeled teeth. So if you open it up in here, these are all prosthetic teeth, right? So people who make dentures you know, use these porcelain teeth. It's so interesting to me, but I mean, I can go on and on. There's just so many weird stuff. And my sculptures are all kind of built out of trash. So I just have a stockpile of interesting things. But again, I'm interested in fluids. I'm interested in the body. So to me, like this thing is not like too far off from some kind of really cool radical vein. And here you go. You have a number on it because it's part of a larger system, right? Um, if you go to my website, you can look at my project, Bubble Guts Enterprises. Um, yeah, there's a lot. So our print studio is called Calliope Arts. And then my website is RodolfoSalgadoJr.com. This is a score I got not too long ago. All the scientific glass stuff. And then I want to kind of show you this piece here. This is a really, like a ceramic piece that I did in undergrad, but I want to kind of pull it out. I haven't opened this box like in seven years. But for me, like all of my sculpture, sorry, it all comes from like, you can tell that I was inspired by a big funnel, right? Or maybe an upside down shower curtain, not a shower curtain, a shower head. And just kind of like put these different phalanges or orifices. I have different glazes in there to make the colors kind of pop a little bit. And also I have a very like, kind of like warty glaze on here. So it kind of also, I believe, like references vomit or the body. But so, I mean, I, so I, you know, I can see, I love just like, look at this form right here. Like that is so cool. So I could totally manipulate that in clay to make something really cool. <laughs> this is an ice cream cone from Center College from GSA two years ago. But there's all kinds of treasures. But I'm just trying to show you that kind of collection here's some old, a bunch of old turned wood i'm thinking about stacking them drilling them together so i kind of end up with this weird i don't know maybe this is too much guys i don't know i wish i could like hang out with y'all in person but if i stacked them you know i would get this weird bodily organ thing i probably um but i do want to show you something over here now we're going next door. Oh, look at that hot tractor, hot pink tractor seat. Just got that powder coated. Can't beat that. So also like, I guess my kind of, I live by the mantra, if you keep it organized, you're not a hoarder, right? But you can see like I'm into collections and these are all hand-blown glass bottles that I've dug out of old toilets in the backyard of my building called privies some of these i found on the ohio river some organs back here and i think also like one of the things oh let me talk about this room too like this is where i shoot my tin types so these are really big lights there's my eight by ten camera four by five camera Let me walk through here. Usually we have people living on the second and third floor, but they moved out right before all this stuff happened. So why am I taking you way over here? These are the two rooms that will be a gallery in the future. But I want to show you this, like 
if you look at my Bubble Guts Enterprises on my website, you'll see very large pink rooms, very large installations. This is a wall for a piece, right? So everything has, you know, a catalog number. And then this, these were called, you know, initiators and actuators. So, but I would, you know, take from pieces from these, these wall pieces and put them together to make sculpture, which would be more clear on my website. Hi, we're back in a virtual world that I quite don't understand, don't quite understand. But yeah, but I want to sum up a few things, right? So I want to remind you that every object, when you make art, every object has a history. So if you're trying to, if you're interested in like rubber gloves for some reason and you don't know why, look at the history of rubber gloves or old bottles or anything, the funnel, and you can find an interesting history and you can kind of develop thoughts and images or objects based off of your research. Right, so history is always a good place to start. Also, you could see here, like this is my Bubble Guts Enterprises installation. So it's just a bunch of crap, guys. It's just trash, and everything's just labeled, and it just has this like implied importance. It's a larger part of a collection, or even you can think of it as an organism, right? Like, like the body, and you're entering this pink space. So art doesn't have to be like real stuffy and confusing. It could be fun and simple, but you have to be honest with what you want to make and how you can make it. And it doesn't have to be super expensive. Like if you, uh, you know, take straws and you cut those straws up into tiny little circles, then you have a whole nother material to work with, right? So you have to think about materials in ways that, like how can you take this thing apart and redesign it and then use it for something else, right? That's one good way to cheap materials. But I just want to show you my installation. So when I graduated from the University of Iowa, I did this project called Bubble Guts Enterprises. And then in 2018, I did this at a local artist run gallery in Louisville called Scheherazade. It's a cool space. Here's my collection of plush poops. Got to have those. Here's some pink fuzzy ones over here. But also you can see like some of my print work starts to make it in into the collection. Um, there's sounds with like quiet flatulence, so it sounds like you're shopping at Macy's, but then you can hear a fart or a burp. Um, there's also a lot of smells. So I hope this is kind of making sense. Tree collection. Yeah, so you can see the labels here, all labeled. You know, this is light flow mechanisms, so I would you know, make these larger hanging sculptures. You can see some up here, but we'll get to there shortly. Here's a nice close-up of those poos again. There's all these little piles and little collections of fluids, jello. This is a block of cheese powder, so there's definitely some smells that happened. But it's kind of like, this was entitled the, the Medicine Cabinet, so it was kind of, like the first time I did this project, I played like a mad doctor, very much a quack, selling snake oil. But this time, uh, it was more just, it's this gallery that you just view through an open window, so no one really gets to go, go in. So, let me see how to navigate my website. Yes, here. Okay, so if we go to my, some of my sculpture work now, here's what I'm talking about. So see, I just kind of used a lot of those materials um, to kind of make this large apparatus that references the body, organs, some kind of machine. But of course, you know, these mechanisms is making healing elixirs, and those are being distributed at Bubble Guts Enterprises. Here's some like sewn intestines. This is an old bedpan. This is an air pump for like a mattress before they went electric. Getting old, guys. Right? So now you can see the comparison here with my some of my ceramics were from 2007, right? I'm very much still inspired by you know, funnels, and this is like a hydraulic pump thing. This is an organ. Um, 
This is some kind of tank that I had. Some more funnel action. Let's get some. And also, you know, I was experimenting with this, like these bags or these sacks of fluid. Because that's kind of all we are, right? It's just like this sack of warm fluid. And if we get stabbed, we leak. If we sneeze, we get coronavirus. No, just kidding. You get. You oh, here's some of my glasswork, too. So I'm always just like scavenging interesting things. These little phalluses were um, from like the soap dispensers where you pump and they shoot soap out. I always was like really interested in those things. But I, I hope that this has all made sense. And if if you ever want to reach out to me to talk about any of this, I would love to talk to you about it. Um, this is also... You know, I'll show you some of my prints too. So for me, this is my more current work. I've started this like secret fraternal society. It's called the Plur Pluralistic Federation for Free Thinking Sphinxers. And it's like a, you know, Knights of the Round Table kind of club, but for like body stuff. But you can see now some of my older work here. Again, the forms, all this, these prints, you know, weird. Um, I'm really into like, prosthetics you know we can that's a whole other line we can go but this is a lot of my drawings a lot of my prints you can kind of see this fuzziness so anyways it kind of all comes together right but I want to just um, yeah I hope it makes sense you can reach out to me I want to show you one other thing maybe some of you all are into photography and I just want to show you my my tintype page real quick and What's happening? Here we go. Ta-da! Man, this was really rolling and rocking before the pandemic. But anyway, so these are photographs, you know, from the technique was invented in 1851. And um, it's really good. I think, like, for me as an artist, it, like, took me a really long time to figure out, like, what I want to do. And it doesn't always mean I'm making art. Sometimes it means I'm making a chicken coop. Or sometimes it means I'm tearing down a ceiling and painting a ceiling. Like... There's a lot of different things that an artist could do. And everyone will always tell you, you know, like, you won't find a job if you're an artist. But the reality is, there's my dad. He's my papa. Um, the thing is, if you get, if you be an artist and you work hard, you get a crap ton of jobs. And they all kind of, like, are hard and crappy at first. But once you, you know, work hard and keep at it, you'll get better jobs. And so Tintype... Photography is one way that I've been able to like make a little money and that has been really helpful for me to like to have that outlet but but remember you're in control of your own destiny you get to work hard and and you just you just got to keep at it and keep making art and keep working hard and and good things will happen don't cheat yourself because that's the only thing that really matters this was fun Hope you guys have a great time at GSA. Hopefully I'll hear from y'all.